All right, I didn't get much sleep last night, so bear with me. So what's up, it's BD. Today I will be talking about the average curve, but before I get into it, like, subscribe. I have a Patreon and I sell men's health aids at Peak Male Physique. They are not needed, but they can help in certain situations. So let's get into it. Like last time, I use Calc SD, a website that is essentially a meta-analysis of hundreds of penis size studies from around the world. They then throw out all the bad data, so ones that don't fit the scientific standard, and then they come to their own Calc SD averages. Now, we are going off the global average as this community is global. Most of you live in a very diverse area, the United States. So you can check out the other size statistics based on ethnicity there, but for this video, we're talking about this and it's really not that much of a difference if you break down the numbers. The issue with Calc SD's average is that it is not essentially clear where you should measure. Some of these studies took the largest point, so that would include the base, and some took just the mid shaft. If you're like me and have a large taper, then that's not necessarily a fair assessment. So what I recommend you do is take the second largest point on your shaft uh, before any loose skin. So if you have scrotal webbing along the bottom, then measure just above that essentially. And in case you didn't watch my video on average length, which you totally should, natural traits follow along a normal distribution, meaning they follow along a bell-shaped curve based on the average size and average variance between two specimens. So the average range of difference in girth, we can calculate the lower and upper bounds of what's naturally possible, and as well as the likelihood of a specimen existing. So we can say a specimen with a, say, five inch penis in girth is about a one in five chance. I go off of five sigma, which is just a fancy way of saying standard deviation. So five standard deviations away from the average as the genetic limit. And then six being the absolute natural limit. So six sigma being the absolute natural limit. And this would be influenced from hormonal factors. Anything over six is not naturally occurring in the developmental sense. And this is just my opinion, I could be wrong, but based off of my understanding of the statistics, it is highly unlikely that a penis over say, seven and a half inches girth is naturally occurring. With all that math being said, let's get into the models. But first, a disclaimer, penises usually taper at the glands. Since I just did pieces of paper, they clearly don't taper. So they're going to look a little bigger than they should. The average is 4.58 around with a standard deviation of about half an inch, five point or 0.52. So with my large hands, it does not look like much. But this is plenty for most females, believe it or not. So between the standard deviation of negative one and one, that would be your typical average range. That would be 5.1 inches on the high end. And then at negative one, you have 4.1. So based off of that, 70% of men just about are gonna fit in this range. That means literally Two thirds of every man you meet are going to be between four and five inches in girth, essentially. Kind of nutty when you think about it, because when with the prevalence of porn and the idea that six inches is supreme in girth, it opens your eyes to show you that a lot of things are not as they seem. So below average, which would be negative one to negative two standard deviations or sigma away from the average is 4.1 inches by three and a half inches, okay? So if you're between three and a half inches and four inches, you are technically below average. One out of, it's a 15% chance of this occurring. So one out of 10 men to two out of 10 men are gonna be this size. And then truly small would be between three and a half to three inches and this would be about a 2% chance of happening. 
Um, if you are smaller than three inches around, I would strongly consider going to an endocrinologist to make sure you do not have a stunted puberty, as at that point, I would say this is more of a form of lack of development than genetic uh, predisposition. So now for the big stats, and then I'm going to show you kind of how ridiculous some of these claims are. So we got your average, you have your end of average, which is five inches. This is the start of like the good dick range for like, let's say the female preference. So only five inches in girth. That's really not that much compared to what you hear on the internet, right? So then we have the start of big, which is five and a half inches in circumference. Now these are my mathematical based opinions. Everyone's gonna have a different definition of big and small. I would assume most people would say above five is actually big because girth is exponential because it's like a volume calculation more than just a linear calculation. So just a slight quarter of an inch in girth can like increase your total penile mass by upwards of like 20% depending on your size. So keep that in mind as I continue. So 5.1, sta one standard deviation, 5.5 .5 to 5.6 for two standard deviations away from the average. Now, based off of this, I can barely touch my fingers. I have eight inch around hands and they're four inches wide. I am consider myself a large dude. If you are watching porn and the female can touch tips, they are most likely smaller than five and a half. These little tricks can show you that porn is all an illusion. Everything is a lie. <laughs> um, anyway, let's continue. This would be 15% of the male population. Thick would be, or above average, would be one out of every 10 men to every two out of every 10 men. Just like it's uh, antithesis of below average, right? Because since it's a perfect spectrum, then it all falls in balance. We got the classified big range next, which is another way of saying statistically significant. We have two at 5.5 and then three standard deviations at 6.1. 2% 2 of men would be this thick. And as you can see, there is a noticeable gap at my fingers for six inches, right? So again, big hands. If I was a female, not my wife, because she's as big as mine, believe it or not, but like a normal sized female, this would be a much larger gap. And if you're a petite woman, then it's gonna be even larger. Now, the average female wrist is between like five and five and a half inches. So that's another good test to see if something's actually considered thick in most people's eyes. So as I said, about 2% of men are gonna fall in that range. So you might actually know someone this size. Six inches is one in a hundred. So the internet's preferred size is much more unlikely than they would lead you to believe. But still one in 100 is 1% 1 of men, which would be what, like 600 million men within some of the show off. So keep that in mind when we're talking about selection bias and stuff like that, which I covered in another video. Huge lies between 6.14, 6.66. At any point on the shaft. All right, now look at that. Okay, <laughs> it's weird, but um, that gap much more noticeable. And again, big dude. At that size range between six and six and a half. Excuse me. Three out of one hundred men would be that big. It is highly unlikely you have ever met a man personally that large, unless you are self-selecting for extremely endowed men. And then after, let's see, where is he? This is a standard deviation of five. This is seven inches, seven inches. And essentially, I would argue that anything after this size is the result of penis enlargement techniques, hormonal issues growing up, or prolonged preaprism events caused by blood disease. Hank talked about this uh, a bit this year. The definition for preaprism is basically an uncontrolled prolonged erection 
lasting more than four hours. Certain blood diseases such as sickle cell anemia can cause preprism via clotting. And these individuals will have erections lasting upwards of three days. The chronic expansion causes damage to the penis, but the body recovers and then overcompensates in that growth, causing it to grow extremely large. Now, normally these penises are disfigured and they start to kind of balloon out like a broken barrel. So typically they'll have like a very small glands, but a very fat middle. And obviously the more often this happens, the bigger they can become. This is a rare complication with sickle cell and don't expect it to happen every guy with the disease. There are probably other underlying factors that play into it, but it also does not show up in studies because, again, it is very rare. But again, chaos exists. That's why when you do look at these studies on your own, make sure you consider the confidence interval applied to that, which would basically apply a certainty factor and give you a range instead of an absolute value. So these gentlemen can grow well beyond eight inches. This has been scientifically documented. I've seen articles where a poor young man had a 13 inch penis around. That is like as thick as my arm up here, okay? As big as an American football, rugby hand egg, whatever. <laughs> um, and he had surgery to reduce that size. So what I'm getting at is that girth has a technical higher upper bound than length in my opinion, but is not naturally occurring in the genetic sense. But it still happens by chance most of the time. So instead of going into a quick overview of like why you guys think the certain way you do, I'm gonna just link the video, um, the penis size explains footnote, where I go over cognitive dissonance, selection bias, uh, observer bias, to help you understand that this is scientifically sound and it's going to take a bit of work for you to come to this new truth. And just a footnote on the pre-prism, you do not want this. These are extremely painful erections. Just imagine if your penis was throbbing sore for three days at a time. You would not be able to function. These men live through hell and I guess it, depending on your definition, this is a consolation prize for the pain they went through. But once you get beyond, say, six inches, that's when girth can really become an issue with penetration. In the United States, we don't even sell condoms off the shelf that big. So what I'm getting at is there's a variety of sizes girth can come into, and there is a slight preference between, uh, let's say, 4.8 and 5.3 inches. Um, scientifically backed, I'll link the study. But it's not the end of the world. It's just like you have a preference in probably larger than average boobs. A woman is going to have a preference for a larger than average penis for a variety of reasons. Now, that does not mean it is a deal breaker if you do not have a penis of that size. And with a little bit of practice, you can easily please the vast majority of women you encounter. Because women are not as cut and dry as us men. I have to keep saying that and I will continue to prove that point later on. Um... I might actually just do another video talking about the complications of larger girths because again there's a lot of misconceptions with bigger is better it's not necessarily the case like <laughs> basically with great power comes great responsibility if you are worried about your endowment uh my subreddit r slash getting bigger promotes a natural way to grow your unit essentially it's kind of like building up a muscle it takes a decent bit of time but over a course of a year you can make significant improvements so with that being said i hope you learned something i have a patreon if you want to join the cause i have a bunch of videos explaining penis size how to enlarge it etc uh peak male physique i sell my own products there for male enhancement aid they are not needed i don't sell like pumps or anything like that because that seems like a conflict of interest if you ask me but the stuff i do sell can help in certain situations this is BD signing off.